A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this so well, I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you all of what I told you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, good morning to all. Good morning to my fellow pilgrims. Good morning to all that are joining us for this beautiful mass. We uh, we come from all over, traveling together from uh, Brooklyn, uh, Maryland, Wisconsin, Illinois, uh, Peru. We've come together this week, and uh, what an appropriate the first reading and the gospel is so powerful today. The first reading talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit and how everybody didn't understand each other at first, but the, but the apostles heard, they understood, and they started speaking. And it was amazing, kind of like our group, right? We started to come together, right? We started to come together as, as, this, as this group. We really didn't know each other a lot of us when we first came here. The Gospel today talks about the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. And it's really a healing. The apostles were so scared, right? They were hiding out in that upper room. They thought they were next. My God, it's going to happen to me. Let's not leave. The courage they had. And my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, there's times in our life when we're hiding out in that upper room. We want to remain safe. And it took a tremendous courage for all of us to travel to this pilgrimage, California together. It took a tremendous amount of courage for me earlier this year. Wasn't feeling well. I went to the doctor and I was diagnosed with bladder cancer. And it was very, very serious uh, at the end of January. And uh, I wanted to stay locked up in that open room, you know. Every doctor I went to, my wife and I would give us the same answer. Uh, sort of like that surrender domain where you want the doctor to tell you what you want to hear, right? Um, it was quite, quite serious. And what happened was, Father Vincent and his rector at St. Joseph had a statue delivered to him by mistake. His sacristan, uh, his uh, sacristan is being brought it in and laid it on the table and Father Vincent opened it up. It was a three foot statue. And he said, who is this? I have no idea who the saint is. The hand was broken. I didn't order this statue. This was in early February, right after my diagnosis, and right after my wife and I running the doctor to the doctor to find out the answer that we wanted to hear. So we did some investigation. Father Vincent called up his, one of his other best friends. I know Thomas Mary is his best friend from Carmelite Tate, but he has another best friend too. His name is Father Justin Sinanthi, who's also from Carmelite. And he explained to him the statue and the name. His name was Saint Charbel. Saint Charbel was a Maronite priest in the Eastern Rite. He was a hermit in the uh, 1800s. And we come on to find out that Saint Charbel has the most healings of any saint in the Catholic Church besides Our Lady. Over 33,000 miraculous 
dealing with documenting with medical documents to prove it. He's from a place called Anaya, Lebanon. His tomb is in Anaya, Lebanon. So we said this wasn't a coincidence, this is a God instance. Saints are in our lives, all our lives. But Saint Chauvel decided to present himself at the most opportune time. I went on to get another procedure, went to another doctor, the surgeon told us we could, the first doctor removed the tumors, I had two tumors, one was quite large for the bladder, it was four centimeters, the other one was one centimeter, and they were high grade tumors, quite aggressive. Um, we went to the second surgeon, we finally got that answer, and he says, I have to go back in. Let me go back in and see what's going on. And when that was going on, St. Chabot kept appearing again. Uh, my cousin, Father Jerry, if, if, if people don't know, we have four priests in our family. Father Jerry is a priest for, for the Dice of Ottawa Center on Long Island, and he lives as a hermit also. So I called him up at the Father Vincent, had the statue of to him. I says, you know, Jerry, somebody sent Father Vinny a statue of St. Chabot. He goes, Michael, how would you know about St. Chabot? Nobody from this part of the world knows about St. Chabot. He's from the Eastern Rite and he's lived as a hermit. And I said, boy, that's another hit too now on St. Chabot because he was going shopping and he wanted to get a statue of Oscar Romero and he ended up next to him was a little statue of St. Chabot that you never see in this part of the world. He bought that too and he put that in his shrine. Before the second procedure, I went to St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan, and they have a shrine there to St. Chabot that Father Justin uh, told us about. And I prayed in front of that shrine. Powerful, powerful shrine. In the meanwhile, Father Justin called up the hermits in the monastery in Lebanon, and they sent the oil from St. Chabot's tomb and they said, uh, said, Father Justin sent me a first class relic that I read daily that he put inside the cross. And I wore that in my second procedure. I applied the oil daily in the morning with the prayer that's in Chabot. And Father Vincent and I, before the second procedure, started a nine day novena to St. Chabot. St. Chabot's body was uncorrupted for over 75 years. Every time they opened his tomb, his body would be drenched in blood and oil and warm to the touch. That oil is what healed me and our prayers, obviously, that's what I feel, and the relic, and my brother, and his two priest friends, and my deacon brothers praying over me. Powerful, powerful. After the second procedure, our prayers continue to sing Chabot daily. We had, while they went to school, over 500 children praying for me, praying to St. Chabot for intercession. After the second procedure, the doctor said, there's no cancer in your bladder. He says, we're going to have to treat it with an immunotherapy called BCG treatment. It'll be one week every six weeks. And every six weeks, every week for six weeks, I went for that treatment. And we kept on praying and praying and praying to this powerful, powerful saint. The Holy Spirit of St. Jean Bell, the intercession, the six weeks came to a completion. He went back in. He said the most beautiful words I ever heard. He said, Michael, your bladder is beautiful. The power of prayer, the power of this powerful, powerful saint that I know nothing about has used me, I feel, as an instrument now to bring the name of St. Chabot to this part of the world. The oil that we'll be using today at the end of the Mass is the oil of 
the soul that the monk sent to me to distribute, to start a prayer group for Father Vincent's prayers and St. John's for the story. To start a prayer group in Our Lady of Mount Tom in Brooklyn. To this powerful, powerful saint that was unknown to us. How many times in our lives Do we search and search and search for an answer? We're all here together today, my brothers and sisters, searching. We're always searching for something in our lives. And St. Charbel gave me the flashlight that I needed. He has changed my life. I now minister to people who have cancer. And I ask Jesus, I ask God, why? Why did you heal me, God? Why me? He wants, he says, my God wants you to work with people with cancer. So I'm ministering to five or six people now that have stage four cancer. And I send them the oil. I send them a relic. I send them the novena. And I said, put them on the case. But the only way you can be healed, my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ, you have to believe. You have to have that faith to believe that this is going to heal me. Jesus Christ is going to heal me through the intercession of St. Charles. So he's changed my life. And hopefully, this little talk we had today and this healing service we have after the Mass, you'll let him in, the Holy Spirit in, and Jesus in.